competitor and when you're trying to play well after a few days of adversity, it's a guy you will want out there for Mississippi State. And so underway here on this Saturday in Startville, Seth Stevenson steps in. And now the count one and one. Stevenson on the weekend is just three for nine. Hits that ball well in the center field and tracking back is Braylon Skinner, who's in the lineup for back-to-back -back days. Went through senior day exercises just a bit ago. Braylon Skinner makes the play. And the leadoff man retired in Charlie the 14th start of the season for Cade Smith. Yeah, and you see the numbers on Cade Smith. Last two times out, he's been really good, trying to put together a third good start to finish out this season. He's kept the walks manageable. What you want to see today, though, pitch with conviction. When you're throwing against a Tennessee lineup, they can hit the ball this well. You've got to trust your stuff. And now Lipsius steps in. Luke Lipsius, five for eight on the weekend, has a double and two home runs. Had the double that got everything started last night in the eighth inning. After the first two guys were out, Lipsius pulled a double into right center field. Beck followed that with an RBI single before Gilbert hit the two-run home run that gave Tennessee the lead. And to the right side, R.J. Yeager comes up with it. And two quick outs to the first inning for Cade Smith to fly out to center field. Now a ground ball to the second baseman, and Jordan Beck will bat with two outs and nobody on him. See that lineup for Tennessee. Gilbert, two for four in the game yesterday, batting in the cleanup spot in the order. Evan Russell down to the eighth spot, six for nine on the weekend with four doubles. And so Tennessee has been good throughout the lineup this weekend. The breaking ball fouled off. Junior from Hazel Green, Alabama, Jordan Beck. Batting 292, 14 home runs, 48 RBIs. We saw Beck two for nine on the weekend. Had a home run in the game on Thursday. Tennessee hit seven Thursday night. Oh, we go, hey. I was going to say, a home run in the ball game on Thursday. Doesn't necessarily lead the stat sheet, does it? Numbers kept going up. Ortega hit two, Lipsius hit two, Jordan Beck hit one. And a swing and a miss, and that will end the inning. So a quick inning, nine pitch inning for Cade Smith. And the first pitch fouled off. Well, former Bulldog, Ross Mitchell, an alum of Blackman High School. R.J. Yeager, 0 for 8 on the weekend. You look at the offensive stats, State batting 203 on the weekend, Tennessee batting 393. Hunter Hines has the most hits for the Dogs with four. Braylon Skinner has three hits. Jaeger, Cameron, James, Lane, Forsyth. Three guys that have started both games with that playing without a hit. And there's a fly ball lifted into left center field and hit well. Back to the track, leaping and gone. A home run for R.J. Jaeger. And State takes a 1-0 lead. On the 18th home run for R.J. What a year R.J. Yeager has had for Mississippi State. Transferred in for his final season and now gets the big hit to start his final game for the Bulldogs. Yeah, virtually no win to the ballpark, and he took it to one of the deepest parts right over the 385 sign and left center field. And the Bulldogs take a 1-0 lead, led 1-0 yesterday after a solo home run in the second inning by Hunter Hines. And have the lead here in the first today. And Luke Hancock will bat.
Beam listed at 6'4", 203. Runs it over the outside corner. Big frame as a freshman. And now the count three and one. Yes, yeah, a Hancock in a rare situation. The hitters count against Drew Beam. He doesn't put you in many of these. Well, Beam last Saturday went just a third of an inning against Georgia. That ball sprayed the other way, and it's going to go foul. Gave up three runs on three hits in a third of an inning against Georgia. Yeah, pitched in relief in that ball game. Took the loss, his only loss of the season. The 3 2. Down and in, and that's ball four. So a leadoff solo home run, followed by a walk. And now Logan Tanner will bat. Well, a guy who doesn't walk, walk a lot of people against a guy that doesn't strike out much. Hancock able to earn his way aboard, and now Logan Tanner, who a little quiet as of late at the plate. And so Logan Tanner, one for eight on the weekend. Logan going through a tough spell. One for eight, had a single in the game on Thursday. He struck out three times this weekend. How about last week for Beam, you talked about getting that loss in the third of an inning. Only game he has pitched in this year that Tennessee hasn't won. And just outside. You know, that's one of the things, to be honest with you, Charlie, that to me makes Tennessee so dangerous here at the end of the year because what normally happens, and we talked about yesterday about the number one seed has not won the national championship. The overall number one seed in the NCAA tournament has not won the championship since 1999. Hot shot at the third baseman right at Lipscomb, glove side. And that's out number one. Good job by Hancock to get back over to the bag. But one of the things about this time of year, as you see this pitch inside, he just hammered. And that will bring up Hunter Hines. But this time of year, you normally have one or two guys. State saw it a little bit last year with Christian McLeod, where at the end of the year you get a little bit tired, ball flattens out a little bit, you start giving up more home runs. But the thing that Tennessee has is if you've got a guy like Beam who's not pitching as well as he has at the front of the year, you've got Blake Tidwell, you've got all these guys, you just got so many options out of your pen, starting pitching and doesn't put as much pressure on a guy like Beam. To the first baseman and now the rundown, and that will end the inning. Warm day out in the sun. We go to the second inning, and Drew Gilbert will lead off. Kate Smith retired the side in order in the top of the first inning, a fly out and a ground out and a strikeout. Man out to Jaeger again. R.J. makes the play for out number one. But they may call a yeah, catcher's, catcher's interference. interference. Yep. Catcher's interference It's going to put the runner on first. And let's take another look because we're going to have some discussion. Chris Lamonis wasn't sure. Well, quickly calling it was Kevin Sweeney, the home plate umpire. And so catcher's interference is called, and that will be an error on the catcher, Logan Tanner. And so the leadoff man aboard. And Trey Lipscomb will come to the plate. 
Fly ball lifted well into left field, and that ball is gone. Scorched by Trey Lipscomb, his 21st home run of the season. And so after the catcher's interference, a two-run home run, Tennessee's ninth home run of the weekend, and it's a 2-1 to one Tennessee lead. Yeah, there's a little bit of wind blowing to left. It didn't matter. That ball was just absolutely hammered. Got the breaking ball down. And Lipscomb went down and got it. And it's quickly two to one. Jarrell Ortega will now bat. Ortega had the five hit night in the game on Thursday. He went 0 for 4 in the game yesterday. He had three strikeouts last night. Tennessee just like that out to a 2 1 lead. Now, really two pitch, cho pitch choices here as you kind of watch Ortega who likes to lean out over the plate. You want to either bust him in hard with a fastball or give him spin away, and Kate Smith went spin away. If you spin it to Ortega, you got to keep it down. He is a guy who can, you leave one up, he can, he can hurt you. Well, it's a 90-degree day. Feels like 98. Humid day. It's a hot day. And so that kind of works in on what you do pitching-wise, how many pitches you could possibly throw. And now the count's three and two. So you get ahead 0-2, and now all of a sudden the count 3-2. At strikeout in the first, Cade Smith on a 1-2 pitch through a fastball. Right down the middle. Let's see if he does it here. Nope, didn't trust it. And a breaking ball high in the first walk of the day. So catcher's interference, a two-run home run, and now a walk to start the third inning of the second inning. And Blake Burke, the left-handed hitting DH, will come to the plate. Burke, a good hitter. He's got some power, doesn't have a ton of starts on the season, but here over the past couple of weeks has really caught fire at the plate. Had six home runs in his past ten games. And that pitch just missed outside. And Eric started now in 16 games this year. Got under that one, though. Mile high, shallow center field. Shortstop, Jaeger out. Skinner comes racing in, and the ball's going to drop. Runs home already here in the second inning. And Evan Russell will be the batter. He's six for nine on the weekend with four doubles. He hits that ball off the end of the bat in the shallow center field. Here comes Braylon Skinner sliding to make the catch. And that's out number one. Well, Skinner took a step back and had to come racing in. Skinner playing way to the left field side. As you say, took a step back, then came hard charging after it, able to slide and make the catch to get the first out of the inning. And now Cortland Lawson will bat. Nine-hole hitter. Bulldogs still playing him very much the pull side and center. Charlie, that's about as pull as you can get in center field. I don't think we've ever seen, certainly this season, a pull quite like that. Oh, one foul back.
You see Braylon Skinner is way over into left center field. You could split the outfielders with the ball hit right back up the middle. Kellum Clark has got a lot of area in right field to cover. He's off the line, and <laughs> Kellum's in his own zip code over there. One and two, the count. Lawson, 0 for 8 on the weekend, three strikeouts. He's walked once, been hit by a pitch. And now the count's even. And now three and two. And yeah, the count at three and two now. Two strikes, Bulldogs more straight away. Out in the outfields, so they've swung Skinner back around. And he walked it. And now the bases are loaded with one out. So get ahead 0-2, and then uh, Lawson, the nine-hole hitter, takes four balls. So you've had two walks and a catcher's interference, an error, and a home run in the inning. The bases are loaded with one out. And the top of the order coming up, Seth Stevenson. Stevenson flew out to center back in the first yeah, inning to get the ball game started. Tennessee went quickly in the first, but... Not so quick here in the second. They got two on the board and still fighting. And now Pico Khan with six straight balls. They've got the bases loaded, so you can work from the windup. Fly ball hit into left center field. It's going to hang up. And Braylon Skinner back to make the catch. Runners will tag from second and third. A run will come in to score. And it's 3-1 to one Tennessee as Ortega crosses the plate. That sounded pretty good off the bat, but hung up in center field, and Skinner able to get over and make the catch. Makes the throw to the cutoff, so the backside runner can't advance. And Burt goes second and third, so runners at the corners now with two outs. And Lipsius will be the batter. Luke Lipsius with a ground out to the second baseman his first time up. State took a 1-0 lead in the bottom of the first inning on a solo home run by R.J. Yeager. Runner going from first, and he will get there easily as Lawson on the backside takes second base. So I think a three to one Mississippi State would be somewhat relieved if a base hit here would really put them in trouble. Because one thing about Tennessee, obviously we talk about beam on the mound, but we got a bunch of arms in the bullpen still to use. Counts even two and two. And foul back, we'll do it again. Yeah. 
And Lipsy is staying alive up there. Saw Khan changing up the repertoire a little bit. He went with a fastball at 93, then a breaking pitch in the high 70s. He fouled it back again. Tennessee has three hits or three runs on one hit here in the second inning. The catcher's interference that was big to start the inning. A walk after the home run. Bulldogs have lost their starting pitcher and their left fielder on the same pitch. Kate Smith went out of the game, the pitcher. Brad Cumbus, a collision in shallow left field with a shortstop lane four side. The 2 2 again. And that one caught Logan Tanner. The Bulldog catcher. Let's take a look and see. Foul ball. They call his right inner thigh. So the bat has been extended here. The at-bat has. Lipsius has just continued to foul pitches off. And I wonder how far this goes to swing in his favor. And he holds off one that time. Wouldn't chase, and now the count goes full. But you know, if, you, if you're con right here, you feel like you've thrown about everything you have at Lipsius and just haven't been able to get a swing and miss. And he walked. Khan has pitched to four batters. He's walked two, and he's got two flyouts to center field. One was a sacrifice fly. And now the bases are loaded with two outs, and Jordan Beck's the ninth man to bat in the inning. Beck a strikeout victim back in the first inning. And that at bat, he had the bases empty against Cade Smith. Now he's got the bases juiced with Pico Khan to face. And the thing for Beck, all of a sudden, you, you look at Khan, you see a guy who's struggling to throw strikes here in the inning. Ahead in the count, you can almost go hunting fastball here. And swing hard. Had the big swing, the pitch down and away. Swung at ball two. Now the count's one and one. Yeah. And that's one of those, you get ahead in the count, guy struggling to throw strikes, sometimes you just say, hey. If I miss, I miss. I live for another pitch. It hits that foul down the right field side, and that will go out of play. Right. Count one and two on Jordan Beck. Hit well in the center field and ranging back in there to make Lane Forsyth and came out of the game. And a breaking ball strike. Jess Davis, 19 hits and 81 at bats, batting 235. He hit a home run last weekend at Texas A&M, his only home run of the season. That was a ball hit pretty well. Bud finds himself quickly behind in the count. Yeah. 
Well, didn't the top of the second inning just sum it up a lot for Mississippi State this year? <laughs> Two players injured on one pitch, catcher's one of, interference. One of them being your pitcher. Had a several walks in the inning, had three runs scored on one hit. Yeah, bottle up that top of the second. There you got it. Game number 56 this year for State. Bulldogs 26 and 29 coming into today. Going to finish below 500 for the first time since 2015. Yeah, Bulldogs like to take that bottle and go bury it somewhere. Count now evens, two balls and two strikes. State will be the first team since 2016, Coastal Carolina, to win a national championship and then not make the NCAA tournament the next year. And that pitch just missed, and the count's three and two. Russell thought he had strike three right there. Well, it's two and two. Well, lengthy at bat right here for Jess Davis, making Drew Bean throw some pitches. Gave up the home run in the bottom of the first, but didn't have to throw many pitches in the inning. In the left field, ranging in is Stevenson. He's there to make the catch route number one. And so the leadoff man retired here in the second inning, and Kellum Clark will come to the plate. Clark had the big hit in the ball game for Mississippi State yesterday to put them ahead. The two-strike pitch had the infield drawn in. Doubled in a pair of runs, but never was able to move off second base after that. Next three guys struck out. In fact, it was that double that chased the starter Burns out of the ball game. Tidwell came in and he righted the ship in a hurry. Yep, struck out the side when he came in in the seventh. There's a shot into center field, a solid single for Kellum Clark with one out. And again, Tennessee throwing behind a runner at first. You cannot take a big turn at first and get too casual with it against this team. That's the second straight game. We've seen an outfielder try to throw in behind a runner at first. Well, remember when Ron Polk's teams used to do that all the time? You'd have Jim Robinson, Barry Winford, and those guys just trailing down the line, on a, especially on a base at the right field. Here's Cameron James. He takes a breaking ball high. And all the time you'd see first baseman trail a runner going down to second. And slide the catcher in behind. We're talking yesterday off the air about the Rod Delmonico teams of the 1990s. You had that great run in the mid-90s for Tennessee. Back-to-back -back titles, 94-95. Then you had Chris Burke and gang going to the College World Series. It's always good to see Chris Burke in a ballpark. Oh, yeah. Chris Burke, Ben McDonald. There's some guys who just good old SEC guys, fun to talk sports with. Check it first, runner going on the 1-1. The strike is called, the throw is down. It's not in time. And a stolen base for Kellum Clark as he swipes just his second base of the season. Second stolen base for Kellum Clark. Got a good jump. 
The pitch a strike to Cameron James. The count now one and two. The state has had success running a little bit this weekend. It's very difficult to look at this Tennessee team and find weaknesses, but if there is one, it's them in the difficulties in controlling the running game. Now, the positive is don't allow many guys to get on base to run against them. The one, two. Cameron James looking for his first hit this weekend. He's 0 for 5 with four strikeouts. And lines the ball in the right center field, and that's a base hit. Kellum Clark will come around and score. So a single, a stolen base that becomes big. In today's world, you can go out and fix it in a hurry. Or try to fix it in a hurry. Yeah, there's certainly opportunities. And here's Braylon Skinner. Runner goes from first. The pitch is down. The throw down to second. And a stolen base for Cameron James. So State feels like they have found something. And here's the thing. Russell behind the plate has now only thrown out five of 62 would-be base stealers as Cameron James steals the base, and that for Cameron, his 14th stolen base. And sometimes that stat can pile on the catchers a little bit unfairly because a lot of times, we saw last night, for example, bases stolen right off the pitcher. Bulldog's gonna try to steal another, and he came off the base. Slid through the bag, and Cameron James tagged out. And that's the second out of the inning. Well, he had gotten there in time. If you go straight to the bag, you're safe. But he tried to go backside and slides right past the bag. He's there, and then he's gone. Two to five on the put out, now two outs. It counts one and one to Braylon Skinner. Skinner three for four on the weekend. Had a double in the game on Thursday. That earned him a start yesterday, and he went Two for three. Fouls the ball back, and the count's one and two. And now the count full to Skinner. To the left side, backhand play by Lawson, throw it across in time for the out, and that'll end the inning. What well, a nice job by Cortland Lawson. He had a fast runner getting down the line, and that will do it for the Dogs, who score one run and get it back to a 3-2 to two game through two. Top of the third inning. Hottest day of the year so far? Yeah. Jason Crowder, Phil Silva, Paul Mock. It's not Paul Mock. So the guy who had the big hit yesterday for Tennessee, Drew Gilbert, will lead it off here in the top of the third. My apologies to Fred. And quickly the count 0-2. What do you think Phil Silva's talking about in the outfield right now? Hard hit ball up the middle. And it skips into center field, a leadoff single. And so Drew Gilbert leads off the third. Tennessee 
has a base runner. Well, Forsyth almost got to it. Well, one thing about Tennessee, you don't always think two-strike approach. This is a team that hits a lot of balls out of the yard and tends to take their cuts, but you saw Gilbert that time just took it right back up the middle and gets the leadoff man on board. Phil's got the visor on out there, long time head of equipment in the athletic department at Mississippi State. And here's Trey Lipscomb, who homered his first time up. Drove a ball to the left field lounge, hit a ball well. Made him just one of three players in Tennessee history with more than 20 home runs. Todd Helton, back in 95, hit 20. That was the lead for the program at the time. The 95 team, R.J. Dickey was on that team. R.A. Dickey, excuse me. <laughs> I was going to correct you, but I didn't R. want to. R.J. Yeager was in my head. Into center field and back, Braylon Skinner, ranging back on the track, makes the catch. Runner retracts, and Gilbert back to first base as Lips committed to deep center field. You have R.A. Dickey. Won a Cy Young Award in 2012. And that was the same year that David Price won it. Is that right? I believe that's right. And Bo McGinnis, who was a manager, former manager at Mississippi State, represented both of those guys as an agent that year. Yeah, a couple of Bo McGinnis guys. Jarrell Ortega walked his first time up. Scored on a sacrifice fly by Seth Stevenson back in the second inning. A three-run second for Tennessee that gave them their three runs. State had a solo home run in the first inning by R.J. Yeager. And then an RBI single by Cameron James driving in Kellum Clark for their second run in the second inning. Three to two. Vols batting here in the top of the third. Dickey, one of those guys who taught himself the knuckleball. His pro career really took off after that. But, you know, for so long, guys that threw knuckleballs were really soft tossers, but he was throwing a hard knuckler. There's a fly ball hit into left field and hit well, and that ball is gone. Ortega, his third home run of the weekend, a two-run home run here in the third inning, and Tennessee takes a 5-2 lead. Well, the ball's flying out to left today, but that one, once again, needed no help. Got way out of here, and Ortega got all of it. Fifteenth home run of the year for Jarrell Ortega. And Blake Burke will bat. And there's a deep fly ball to right field. The ballpark going to hold this one, though. Kellum Clark ranging over. He'll make the catch a step on the warning track as Burke just barely got under that one. 5-2 Tennessee. And Evan Russell will bat.
As things get started over in Hoover on Tuesday. Yep. Tennessee won't play till Wednesday. So it brings up the point you start to look at for Tennessee, obviously the dominant regular season. How deep do you want to play at Hoover? Yeah, that's the question, right? <laughs> How long you want to be there? Now, Tennessee in 95 won the SEC with Rod Delmonico, then went and won in Hoover. Then the book kind of became that, that Hoover didn't matter as much. It was that 2000 team with – was it 2000, 2001 with Burke and that group? We went to the College World Series. It had the great year in the regular season. Went to Hoover, went two and out. And you could pretty much tell that they didn't want to be there. There's a chop left side. Cameron James fields and throws. And time has been talked about throughout the college baseball season. The hard thrower for Tennessee. 103 turned around by Forsyth to the third baseman. And that's out number one. So one pitch, one out. Forsyth grounds out to third, and R.J. Yeager will bat. Well, Ben Joyce. He's made a lot of pitching ninja appearances this year. All over social media. He can run it up there in a hurry. Junior from Knoxville. Continuously over 100 with his fastball. He hit 105 against Auburn a couple weeks ago. He throws an 84-mile-an-hour slider. It's hard enough to time up 102. Mix something in like that and life gets really hard. ERA of 2.08, he's given up four home runs, 14 hits and 26 innings of work. The one, two, he tried to slide her at 81 that time. Got a start last week against Georgia, went four innings, allowed three runs in the contest. That definitely a guy draws the oohs and ahs of the crowd. And a fly ball hit into right field. And ranging in to make the play is Jordan Beck. So Forsyth and Jaeger both on fastballs at 103. And that's legit. I mean, it is legit. Yeah, yeah that's not some guy's dad with the pocket radar gun. No, it's not showing up to practice one day and throwing up the old hawker. <laughs> I swear my kid hits 90. Here's Luke Hancock. Yeah, I had a dad of early in the season from another team walk up. My son was pitching, and he says, hey, you want, do you want to know what he was throwing? Said, I was no, like, he's 11. He's 11. I don't care what he's throwing. <laughs> and I said it tongue-in-cheek. I was not a jerk. I was not as negative as I could be to you, Charlie. The 1-1. One, one. Tennessee with a two-run top of the third, a two-run home run by Jarrell Ortega, expanding a lead from five to three, or excuse me, from three to two to five to two. Oh. And it hit him. Fastball at 102, and that hurts.
Mm. Got him on the back leg. And he gets the meat of the bone. Got the quad area. So here's the deal. What's uh, Kevin Sweeney making notes in his notepad? Surely to goodness you didn't get a warning for that. Oh, he wouldn't think so. Runner at first. Pitch outside. You know, a little, bit of, a little bit of talk over the past couple of days between these two teams, but nothing so far today that, no. that we've seen at all. And what you've seen the last two days is nothing that's completely over the top. Yeah, at least not during the contest. Now, there's been talking, there's been jawing, but you've got jawing, it seems like, in every game in college baseball, and you can debate that point all day long if you'd like. But it hasn't been an overly ab abundant amount this weekend. The 2-0, way outside. Then it goes back to the point about you know, you've got a guy in Ben Joyce who throws in triple digits. You have to locate. Only the second hit batter of the year for him. Does have five wild pitches. Oh. And at 104 over the outside corner. The thing that's been impressive about Ben Joyce, 45 strikeouts and just nine walks and 26 innings of work. So he has been a strike thrower. Locates it well. And I mean, so the, that's the thing, because how many times do you see guys, it, what, what do they say, rifle, arm, shotgun, command? Yeah, well, you he's know, got the rifle and the scope. I mean, he's I mean, got he, it all. <laughs> a lot of times you see the rifle, but the guy forgot to buy the scope. <laughs> he's got the scope, too. Here's a 3 2. Swing and a miss. And that will end the inning. Logan Tanner strikes out. Bulldogs strand a base runner. We play three here in Starkville, and Tennessee has a 5-2 lead. Top of the fourth inning here in Starkville, 5-2 Tennessee. Vol scored three in the second, two in the third. State scored a run in the first, one in the second. And we move to the fourth inning. He's got some pineapples on their shirts. Nine one and two due up for Tennessee here in the fourth inning. Lawson, Stevenson, Lipsius against the left-hander Pico Khan. Lawson Second. walked in his only plate appearance so far. And that was against Khan back in the second inning. Second time through the order for Pico. And pull the string over that one. The count's 0-2. If he missed it earlier, Bulldogs kind of had their entire season summed up in one play. They had a fly ball out behind shortstop. Cumbest coming in, Forsyth going out. They collide. Cumbest has to leave the ball game. And just as we were talking about that, we then see Chris Lamonis and a trainer go to the mound and Cade Smith, the starting pitcher for the Bulldogs, had to leave. One pitch, two guys down. Here's a 2-2. Came right after him. There's a line drive in the right center field and a diving catch for Braylon Skinner, covering some ground in the outfield. Well, Braylon's been solid out in center field this weekend. 
Here on senior day for him. Braylon Skinner's had a good weekend all the way around for Mississippi State. Three hits yesterday, a double in the game on Thursday, and he's covered some ground out in center field today. And Braylon, one of those guys just away from the field, just tremendous ambassador for baseball here at State. Always got a smile on his face. Always great to talk with Braylon Skinner. Well, because of that stolen base and run scored against Texas in the World Series last year, he'll be remembered here for a long time. Three and oh the count now. Seth Stevenson, who hit a ball to center field his last time up, drove in a run with a sacrifice fly. And that's ball four. I did just get a glimpse, though, of Brad Cumbest in the Bulldog dugout, so that's a good sign. At least you hope so. Right now, two and a third of work for Pico Khan. Two runs, two hits. No strikeouts and three walks. He's thrown 51 pitches, 26 strikes. So 50-50 pretty much on strikes and balls for Pico Khan. Out of 51 pitches thrown. And then that would pop back and out of play. Lipsius the batter. Luke Lipsius walked his last time up against Pico Khan. He granted out to the second baseman in the first inning. And the 0-2, ground ball, high chop over the head of the first baseman and into right field. And on his way to third is Stevenson and runners at the corners now as Lipsius with the single to right field. Charlie, talk about this just. Yeah, hit that turf out in front of the plate, hit a big hop, hop. So here's Beck, strikeout back in the first, lined out to center field in the second. Beck struck out swinging in the first inning against Cade Smith, the Bulldogs starter. And then a fly out to center field to end the second inning. Pops that one foul. And they go out of play, and it will, down the first base side. Good crowd here at the ballpark. Bulldogs, not a, lot of, not a lot to play for other than pride, but a good crowd of Mississippi State fans here. Two pitch goes outside, and now he got runners on the corners, one down. Oh, 
And popped up, foul territory again, and that will once again get out of play. Start wondering about the possibility of a double play ball if you're Mississippi State. If the outs that Khan has recorded, six have been fly outs, just one ground out, so not a lot of ground ball action. Runner going from first to the throw down, and now let's see when the runner at third takes off. And here he comes. Here comes the throw of the plate and his air mail. Run will score. The backside runner going to end up at third. And that will not be fouled away in the Tom Amansky style of dual rundowns. A lot of purpose behind that play, just trying to get caught in the rundown. And you want to break as the runner at third once the ball goes to the first baseman because he's the one that's got to have his momentum kind of pulling him away from home plate. And that throw just kind of went with the momentum. And that one bounced up to Jordan Beck, and now the count's three and two. Infield comes in now. It's a six to two game. So you kept waiting on that runner to break, and Stevenson finally did break. And that's outside, ball four. Two walks in the inning. That's the fourth for Pico Khan. And now runners at the corners again. And still just one out. Uh, the walk to Stevenson came on four pitches, but Beck that time was down in the count 0-2. Foul to pitch off, but four of the next five were out of the zone. And so right back where we were, which is to say runners on the corners and one down for the Volunteers. Only now it's Gilbert at the plate, the left-hander who went opposite field last night for the hit that was the difference. He pulls that one way out of the ballpark. I haven't seen any action in the bullpen for Mississippi State, at least from our angle. Gilbert reached on a catcher's interference in the second inning. And then had a single in the center field, ground ball right back through the middle. That was in the third inning to lead off. He later scored on the two-run home run by Ortega in the third. And pulls that one into shallow right field. And Jaeger back out there on the grass, reaches up and makes the catch. And that's out number two of the fourth inning. Well, the final out will not be an easy one to record for Pico Khan because Trey Lipscomb is going to come to the plate. Homer back in the second, flew out to center field in the third. That home run. for Lipscomb is 21st on the season. Had a fly out to center field his last time up, so he's one for two today. You wouldn't think that Tennessee would have something going in the running game here. Guy like Lipscomb at the plate, like to let him swing away with men aboard. But Pico Khan not as convinced. But that's going to be all. Those throws over may have been just buying a little time for Jackson Fristo. Warming down in the bullpen, Chris Lamonis will come out. And that'll be all for Pico Khan today. 
And so we get a final look at Jackson Fristo here in the 2022 season as he's going to come into the game with two outs and runners at the corners. Tennessee with a run home to expand the lead to 6-2. to two. We're in the top of the fourth inning here in Starton. Well, Jackson Fristo will come in, his final appearance here in 2022. The sophomore from Paducah, Kentucky. All right, Charlie, what you want to see out of Jackson Fristo today? Well, you'd like to see a lot of strikes. Fristo, in 34 innings of work, has walked 18 on this season. In SEC play, Fristo's gone 15 and two-thirds, walking nine, so... Part of the challenge for Jackson Fristo, just not allowing free passes. I think it's almost one of those spots, too, and we've talked about this in other situations where sometimes you just tell the guy on the mound, you're about to eat up a couple of innings. You can yep. get hit, don't get hit, we don't care. <laughs> this game is yours for a couple of innings. He pitched in the Sunday game. Saturday and the Sunday games out of Texas A&M last weekend. In the Saturday game, he gave up two runs on one hit, one strikeout, one walk. And no runs, one hit, one inning of work in the Sunday game and uh, College Station last weekend. And he will face Trey Lipscomb here with runners at first and third and two outs. Have a little jewelry check out on the mound. Lipscomb with a two run home run and a fly ball to center field. Alan Fristo's missed up on a couple of pitches. And so now Lipscomb in a hitter's count at 2-0. and oh. People talk all the time about 3-1 and one being a hitter's count, but 2-0 and oh really favors the hitter. And now 3-0. and oh. Two outs in the inning. And the dangerous Ortega on deck. And ball four. Fristo comes in, four pitches, and his first walk of the day. So that'll get Jarrell Ortega to the plate for the Volunteers. Ortega, his last time up, left no doubt. Home run, drove in a couple. Walked and scored back in the second, but Ortega's had the big weekend. And so Fristo with the bases loaded can work from the windup. Got Beck the runner at second. Lipsius the runner over at third. Big swing on that first pitch slider. Three home runs on the weekend for Ortega. Also has a couple of doubles. Because last time up, one out, one on, got all of it. Dropped the barrel head, launch angle, ran it out of here in a hurry. 
And now the count, two and one from Frisco. Frisco. And there's strike two. Here's a 2-2. And there's strike three called on the outside corner, and that will end the inning. Ortega looks at strike three. Balls leave the bases loaded in the fourth, but score a run on the Bulldog error and lead 6-2. The bottom of the fourth inning in Tennessee with a 6-2 lead. And Hunter Hines will bat it. Grounded out to the first baseman Lipsius back in the first inning. Started to double place as Lipsius stepped on the bag then threw out Hancock. Trying to go down to second. Chops the ball left side. High hop for Lawson. He makes the throw in time for the out. First out of the bottom of the fourth inning. So Hines is retired. That'll get Jess Davis to the plate. He came in the ball game to replace Cumbest after he was injured. And so Jess Davis. This second at bat today. Hit a fly ball to left field back his first appearance. That was in the second inning. Pitch count now at 24 for Joyce. Not sure what his length would be today. I think you can classify Ben Joyce as max effort. He certainly run it up there. Two and two the count. And now three and two. And that one runs outside. And ball four and a one out walk for Jess Davis here in the bottom of the four. And Kellum Clark will bat. He singled to center field his first time up back in the second inning. Jess Davis, who runs it first, has good speed. Everything fastball-wise in triple digits. He missed down. Davis three for six in the stolen base department on the season. Huh. Stadium gun had 103 and ours had 104.
I asked for an explanation on that one day. What was your answer? That the stadium gun rounds everything down. So a 102.9 on that gun will read 102. Okay. Whereas this one would round it up. Okay. 2-2. Two -two. Down and in. Now, of course, when you get the track man data, go back and break it down, you can tell it was 102.67, what have you. We need to work on that next year. We need like a monitor up here with all the track man data. I would love that. 3-2, ground ball chopped through the right side in the right field. Jess Davis going to try to get the third. Here comes the throw, and he had an RBI single his last time up. And chopped foul down the third base line. I would argue if that's what Lipscomb was doing, you almost like it. You know, you've seen a guy come around the bag once already today. Just yeah, snock his leg off the bag. Got no problem with that. We get that call now and then. Let's take one more look at that. So has the foot on the bag and then, <laughs> yeah, dude, that's a nice call. Yeah, and Ronnie hit. Teague down at third base. Big swing at the 1-1 fastball. But you know, it's one thing to see it on a monitor. It's another in real time to have to try to make that call. That's a tough call to make in live action. Could, to the casual eye, it looks like the guy came off the bat. Oh, oh my. fastball high, just three walks in 28 innings of work. But better than a strikeout per inning. And the first pitch fouled off. Braylon Skinner grounded out to the shortstop his first time up. And he drops a breaking ball in there for strike two. Fins it off to the third baseman and the throw to the plate. And the lead runner erased on the force play at the plate. Jess Davis thrown out, five to two on the putout as Lipscomb makes the play for out number two. Put it in play, but Lipscomb does a good job coming to get it, making the accurate throw to the plate. No tag required. Force all the way around. And we're going to have a pinch hitter. Forsyth coming out of the ball game, and Tanner Leggett will come in. So Kellum Clark takes third. Cameron James now down to second. Braylon Skinner reaches on the fielder's choice. And Tanner Leggett will get his first at bat today, batting 213 on the season. Leggett in league play, four for 22, batting a buck 82. Let's go, Pancun! It's a pinch hitting here in the fourth inning. Bases loaded now, two outs. Final day of the season for State. Tanner Leggett honored before the game on senior day. He takes that pitch outside and it counts two and one. Well, big pitch coming right here.
and fouled it off, and the count's even. Bases loaded. The last thing you want if you're Connell is the count to go three and one. So now it's even, two balls, two strikes. Bulldogs want to see if Leggett's got one more big swing in him. Chopped it down the third baseline, and that will end the inning. Started here in the top of the fifth for Tennessee. It'll be seven, eight, nine in the inning. Four of the volunteers, Burke, Russell, and Lawson. Burke reached on an error. He was the guy who hit the ball in the shallow left field in the second inning that Cumbus and Forsyth ran together on. And then his last time up at a fly ball high to the warning track in right field that Kellum Clark went back and made a play on it. Swing and a miss of the slider. Fristo came in and got the final out in the top of the fourth inning. Issued a walk and then came back, got a strikeout to end the frame. Here's a one-two to Burt. Swing and a miss at the fastball. And out number one of the fifth. Came right after him on the one-two. And now Evan Russell will bat. He's 0 for 2 today. A fly out to center field and a ground out to third. Both at bats coming against Pico Khan. Warm weather, everybody seems to have a little extra on the fastball today. And that one's turned around. And way out of here, top row of the outfield, Evan Russell with a solo, solo shot to left. That's his 13th home run. And so high velo coming in and high velo going out. And it's 7 to 2, Tennessee. 137th home run on the season for Tennessee. That's the most since the BB Core era began back in 2011. Nothing cheap there. Popped up. Foul territory. First baseman giving chase, and Hancock makes the play as Lawson, first pitch swinging, fouls out. So back to the top of the order, Stevenson. 0 for 1 on the day, a sacrifice fly, a walk, and a fly out. Scored after walking in the fourth. Two outs here in the fifth inning. Hit that ball in the center field, but right at Braylon Skinner, and that will do it for the fifth. Tennessee has scored in four consecutive innings. This will 
wind it up here today. Jaeger playing in his final game. Had a home run back in the first inning. Fly out to right field his last time up. Nice play by Lipscomb over at third. Had to come up with a in-between hop. Makes the throw over for out number one of the fifth. That's one that takes some funny hops on you over there at third base. Nice job going glove side and making the throw across. That'll get Hancock to the plate. With one down, Hancock was hit by a Ben Joyce fastball his last time to the plate. Hancock's been on base twice today. He walked in the first. He was hit by a pitch in the third. Rips that ball into right field, ranging over his back. He's there to make the catch, and that's out number two. So Hancock hits it hard into right center field. It holds up for Beck. Now two quick outs in the fifth, and Logan Tanner will bat. You know, the wind can't decide what it wants to do today. Pick up a little while, calm down for a little while, but boy, you hit the left and it'll go. Tanner lined out to the third baseman in the first inning, and he struck out swinging to end the third. So a quick couple of outs for the Bulldogs here in the bottom of the fifth. 2-2 Two -two count on Tanner. This one always need to put it in play, trying to keep something going offensively. Chops it left side. Lipscomb cuts it off. Rights his feet, fires it over, and time for the out. Line drive in the left field. That's a base hit. First pitch swinging Lipsius goes the other way. No, good job going the other way by Lipsius that time. Hits one hard. Davis got over to it quickly and holds Lipsius to a single, but the leadoff man aboard for Tennessee. Third time in the ball game, the Volunteers have had the leadoff man aboard. Three out of six day. Bulldogs have gotten the leadoff man on just once. High shot past the third baseman, Cameron James, into the left field corner. Runner going to try to get to third. The throw comes in that direction. That allows Beck to reach second base on the backside. And back-to-back -back hits to start the sixth inning for Tennessee, and they have second and third, and nobody out. Ball hit really hard past the third baseman, James, and as you... Point out, Bart, that throw coming into third base allows the backside runner to take second. And now there's a couple of men in scoring position for the Volunteers. Nobody gone here at the top of the sixth. And Drew Gilbert will bat. He popped out to the second baseman his last time up. He's been on base twice today, scored twice. Reached on catcher's interference to start the second inning. 
You know, it looked like a routine ground ball to the second baseman to start the second. But call quickly made by the home plate umpire Kevin Sweeney of catcher's interference. And the next batter, Lipscomb, had a two-run home run. And Lipscomb is on deck. Gilbert, the guy at the plate, this last batter that saw Pico come. And so this is the final batter for the first time through the order for Fristo. Bulldogs playing back defensively. A ground ball would push a run across. And now three and two. And down to the right field corner. Yeah. That will play the pair. It's a nine to two game. Gilbert. On his way to second, and three balls hit well to start the sixth inning. Single back-to-back -back doubles. First couple went to the left side. That one pulled hard to the right. Passed Luke Hancock, got down in the corner, and Tennessee just continuing to pile on offensively. They've scored in every inning but the first. And it's 9-2, to two, and Trey Lipscomb will bat. He faced Fristo back in the fourth inning, drew a walk. Lipscomb had a two-run home run in the second, a fly out to center field, deep to center field in the third. Tennessee trying to end the regular season with 49 wins and 25 in conference play. That is unheard of. And there's some good baseball teams in this league. 25 and five. Back up the middle, cut off by Forsyth, throws it. Nice job by Lane Forsyth, moving to his left. Lipskin is retired, and Gilbert moves over to third. Well, off the bat, I didn't think it was any way that Forsyth was getting to that. Well, that's Leggett who checked in the ball game. That's right. Pinch hit earlier. That's a really nice play. Yep, Tanner Leggett. Out of short. My apologies to the Leggett family. Charlie, I didn't write it down in my book. That book will get you. It will get you. I didn't think there was any way it gets to that ball and able to throw Lipscomb out at first base. Really nice play. I thought that ball was very likely to get out into center field. And Ortega at the plate. Ortega walked and scored in the second, had a two-run home run in the third, and he struck out looking to end the fourth.
Hot shot. Leggett backs up on it. Long throw. Nice play by Tanner Leggett. That's two in a row. Big time plays by the Bulldogs shortstop. Gilbert scores from third, so Ortega gets credit with an RBI on his ground out. Tennessee has a 10-2 lead, but once moving to his left, this time Leggett moving to his right, planted strong with that back foot and a nice throw across. Boy, that's another nice defensive play by Tanner Leggett. We have a pinch hitter for the Volunteers. Christian Moore. In place of Blake Burke. So how about that? Christian Moore comes into the ball game as a pinch hitter, and he's got 10 home runs on the season. How many times you can go to the bench to pull up a double-digit home run guy? Yeah, Tennessee has eight guys in there. All their team, eight guys with double-digit home runs. And Gilbert sitting at eight. Not far off himself. State has four guys. Jaeger now with 18, Hines with 16, Cumbus with 15, and Kellogg Clark with 13. One, two, swing and a miss. And that will end the inning. Tennessee. Here in the bottom of the sixth inning, it'll be Hunter Hines, Jess Davis, then Kellum Clark. That fly ball hit into right field, and backing up it. Beck. Ranging back a couple of steps from the track, reaches up, makes the catch. And that's out one of the sixth. Hines got under that one just a little bit. Jess Davis will come to the plate. Davis, another Bulldog, playing in his final game here. Now Davis walked his last time up against Ben Joyce. Had a fly out the left field in the second inning. You know, Bart, we were talking earlier about how you approach the SEC tournament. We've seen a number of times where that tournament meant nothing. We've seen it with South Carolina that went on to win a couple of championships, going 0-2 one year, 1-2 the other. Mississippi State, the quick 0-2 appearance last year. It's kind of feeling with Tennessee, though. They're going to go over there with a purpose, try to win the thing. And a swing and a miss. For out number two. Yeah, when you're kind of built on the mantra of having an edge. Yeah, that's the thing. It just you, doesn't fit well it, to it say doesn't, it doesn't matter. Yeah, that you don't you don't mail it in for a, a couple games. Well, on the other thing, there's so much pitching that it's not like you've got to wear anybody out to try to push deep. And a ground ball out to the second baseman. First pitch swinging, Kellum Clark. And that will end the inning. Eight in a row retired by Tennessee pitching. And we go to the top of the seventh inning. 10 to two, Volunteers. Well, we got the top of the seventh and Tennessee has scored in each of the last five at bats. And have a 10-2 lead. 3-2-1-1-3. What's that zip code, Charlie? Oh, have to do the zip code trivia today. Citra, Florida. First pitch swinging, and there's a pop-up. Left side of the infield, foul territory. Cameron James has it. One pitch, one out as Evan Russell pops out in the foul territory. And that's out number one of the seven.
You ever been to Citra, Florida? I have not, but it is midway between Gainesville and Ocala. Yep. It's horse country down there. You know, Ocala, that's a big horse farm area. Just the limestone. They have limestone area around Ocala, Florida, and then Lexington, Kentucky, and it's the, the water, the minerals in that limestone, the water that rolls through that limestone, and it's very good for the horses with their the calcium for their tendons and their their bones. That's why it's thoroughbred areas. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. There's a ball pull foul. So I've been told. I didn't read Wikipedia on that. Normally I'm guilty of that. One and two the count. Cortland Lawson at the plate. He's 0 for 2, a fly out and a pop out. Nine hole hitter. Breaking ball, swung on and missed. And two quick outs here in the seventh inning for the right hander, Jackson Fristo. Yeah, brings the breaking pitch up and in. And now there's two gone, and I think we're going to have another pinch hitter. We have reached that point of this contest. Is that going to be Dickey? Kyle Booker. Okay. Booker will bat. He's had 42 at bats this year with 10 hits. Three doubles, one home run. Batting 238 on the season. He made six starts this year. And Booker batting in place of Stevenson here in the top of the seventh. Sophomore from South Haven, Mississippi. And strike three, and that will end the end. So Booker strikes out. And it's stretch time here in Starkville in the middle of the seventh. Tennessee still leading 10-2. to two. Bottom of the seventh, Tennessee with a 10-2 lead. And the volunteer is going to go back to the bullpen as Camden Sewell come in and pitch. Sewell, the senior right-hander. Five and one record, a 2.59 earn run average. The senior from Cleveland, Tennessee. Well, you notice a couple of things. The good ERA, and it keeps the walks down. Those two have a lot to do with each other. And boy, like so many guys on this Tennessee staff, Sewell, a guy who will bring a fastball and a slider, but when he's facing right-handers, basically 50-50 split each way. Now, one thing to watch, he's got a two-seam fastball that's got some sink to it. You got it We've seen Mississippi State struggle with sink at times this year. And here's Cameron James, RBI single in the second inning. He was hit by a pitch in the fourth. It'll be Cameron James, Braylon Skinner, and then Tanner Leggett to bat third in the inning. It's one of the things that makes this Tennessee staff so good, the way guys just complement each other. Chopped up the middle, shortstop, can't get to it. And Cameron James puts the brakes on, makes the wide turn around first. He has two hits today. Lawson was swung into the six hole, so the open area was in the middle of the infield. 
Cameron James singles up the middle. Talking about the way these pieces all fit together, you think about that, you see a Joyce come in throwing over 100, then Connell comes in, works it from the left side, much different pitcher, and now you go back to a guy who can get some sink, some two seam action. And now Braylon Skinner bats. He's 0 for 2 today, a couple ground outs. One to the shortstop in the second inning, and then with the bases loaded and one out in the fourth inning, hit a ground ball down the third baseline, and Tennessee able to force the runner at the plate. from Sewell foul back. Yeah, Bulldogs trying to find some magic here before this season comes to an end. You have the leadoff man aboard here in the bottom of the seventh. Ground ball and headed to right field. The base hit for Braylon Skinner. And runners at first and second after back to back hits for the Dogs here in the seventh inning. First baseman holding the runner. Slides it through the right side. Braylon Skinner has his fourth hit of the weekend. Well, that's back-to-back -back hits off Sewell, who... Opponent's hitting just 179 against him in league plays. He doesn't get hit a lot. And Leggett, his second at bat, he hit a ground ball to the third baseman with the bases loaded and two outs in the fourth inning, and Lipscomb just stepped on the bag to end the inning. Ninety degrees at game time, just a few clouds in the area. We have some pocketed thunderstorms about an hour and a half to the south of us. A little soft line drive, left field, that's a base hit. Cameron James going to come around and he will score in three consecutive singles to start the seventh inning by the bottom three in the order. So Bulldogs get a run across the plate as Tanner Leggett delivers the base hit. And that'll roll things back to the top of the order for Mississippi State, R.J. Yeager. We'll get a chance to hit. And a left-hander going down in the bullpen for Tennessee right now. And Jaeger, the sand wedge in center field, and that's going to drop. Skinner had to hold up, but now four straight singles. Lined out to the right fielder, Jordan Beck. Four straight singles to start the inning. These walk totals by Tennessee pitching, just otherworldly. And there's a fastball strike, and it counts even. Only three guys on the Tennessee roster have double-digit walks this year. Well, for Mississippi State. Well, you throw hard, you throw strikes, 
Good things happen. A strike two called and a count two and two. Bases loaded, nobody out. One run home here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Hancock staying alive. Logan Tanner in the on-deck circle. And now the count full. I don't know where to put Logan uh, or Luke Hancock right here. Oh! Mabry out of the bullpen. Fifth Tennessee pitcher today. Chop, first baseman backing up on it. Bobbled it, picked it up, no play at first. A run will score, and the bases stay loaded. Well, Mabry just didn't go cover the bag. He was late getting over there. He got guilty of standing and watching. Lipsius made the play, dropped it, then picked it up. Yeah, pitcher just didn't cover See, by the time he realizes he's got to get over there, it's just way too late. So that gets it to 10 to 4, brings up Logan Tanner, bases loaded, still nobody out. Here in the home half of the seventh inning. Hey, crank one right here, wind blowing out the left. All of a sudden, things change a little bit. Man, he was thinking the same thing. <laughs> he had the idea. Four straight singles. They give the first baseman, Lipsius, an error on that play. So no RBI for Luke Hancock. Well, he does get an RBI. The run was going to score regardless. If I was lip, yes, I'd be under heavy protest assigning that one to me. Didn't have anybody to throw it to. I guess they got him with a bobble. Snap throw back to first, and back in was Hancock. Count now two and one to Logan Tanner. Still nobody out, the 2-1. Threw the fastball by him, and it counts 2-2. Two and two. and a miss and a big strikeout for Mabry as he strikes out Logan Tanner for the first out. Breaking pitch, Tanner just swings over it. And now Hunter Hines will bat, left on left. Hines 0 for 3 in the game. Hard hit ball at the second base. To second for one, the throw to first is in. Hey, LSU has scored 42 runs against Vanderbilt this weekend in Nashville. They're about to sweep Vanderbilt. How about that? After getting swept at home last weekend by Ole Miss, LSU is getting after the doors this weekend. And quickly the count 2-0. Oh. 
Lipsius, Jordan Beck, then Drew Gilbert. The guys do up for Tennessee here in the eighth. So Vanderbilt will finish two games under 500 in the league. Yep. Let's go CT. Who else you like in the league this year? Well, chance to get to Omaha. You know, that's the thing about it is there's always a team or two, sometimes three, that gets to Omaha that kind of leaves you scratching your head. How'd they get hot this time of year? Three, two, chop, back to the mound. Taller with an underhand toss. You know, A&M's a team that's kind of surprised. They've hit the ball extremely well of late. And they've come on lately. I think there's a lot to having been there and done that. You know, you look at this Tennessee team. And I think that one of the reasons that State had so much success last year. Did everybody been there because a couple had, of times? You had been there. You understand the responsibilities with ESPN when you get there, the pictures to take. You've seen the ballpark. You understand the ballpark. You understand how big it is. And Already had the team picture in front of the statue and all yeah, that stuff. I mean, so I think there's a lot to be said for that. You kind of wonder how Arkansas will be after losing last year at home as a top seed overall in the country, losing to NC State. How much pressure will the Hawks put on themselves in a regional and a super regional at home? Yeah, it's, it's a lot different feeling than going to Omaha and coming up short just not getting there at all. But Arkansas team, you certainly can't write off. The thing about is just getting to Omaha. You, you kept on saying about State last year, this was a team that could get to Omaha with a Will Bednar, with a Landon Sims that you don't have to have as deep of pitching to win a national championship because everything is so spread out. Now, they are going to kind of dial it back a little bit this year. Well, they're cutting a day off this year. Cut a day off this year. And foul out of play. And so you could run into that team. I mean, you think back to last year, Will Bednar started three games in the College World Series. And I can't decide what I think about tightening things up. On the one hand, you say, man, this event's a long time. But on the other, you hate to put more strain on arms by guys coming back to back. Out to Kellum Clark. And that's out number two. Because you think about that, that's one of the things that people will forget over time with just looking at the performance that Will Bednar had in that decisive game three, it was obviously impressive. It was on three days rest, even more impressive. And now Drew Gilbert will bat. Two for four today. He scored three times, reached on an error. His first time up in the second inning. The single, a pop, uh, Pop fly in the shallow right field. The second baseman made a play on. He had a two-run double back in the sixth inning. You know, obviously bats are important, but if there's anything that I think gives Tennessee a lot of hope this year, it's just the depth of the pitching. Ripped in the right center field. Over to cut it off of Skinner. Gilbert takes the big tumble coming around the bag at first, and he'll have a single instead of a double. That's one way to put the brakes on. Take a look at the turn at first. He scalded it. Thinking, nope. Mm. 
And slipping on that last step before you hit the bag. Now we're going to see a trip to the mound from Chris Lamonis. So a two-out single by Gilbert, and that will do it for Cam Toller, who will come out. And Mississippi State will go to the bullpen as Toller walks off the mound for the last time. We'll step away, Tennessee with a 10-4 lead. Now Drew Talley will come in to pitch. Trey Lipscomb will be the batter, runner at first, and two outs here in the eighth inning. 19th appearance of the season for Talley. He's worked the ERA under four. But Talley's pitched a lot better as of late. Came into the ball game on Tuesday for Mississippi State. Got him out of a jam. Early in that ball game, Bulldogs had fallen behind four to nothing. Went two and a third in that game. Didn't allow a run, allowed just two hits. In fact, has not allowed a run since April 29 in a ball game against Missouri. Allowed one run then. You know, in the life of a relief pitcher, one outing can really skew your numbers. And only once this season has Tally given up multiple earned runs. But that's when he went an inning against Southern and gave up Fords. So that's really skewed the ERA all season long. Got that one underneath the hands of the right-handed hitting Trey Lipscomb. And pulls it into left field. Coming in and dropped by Jess Davis. A wave the runner around third. Here comes the throw of the plate, and a tag is applied, and he is out. Come to an end. No, but this one will come to an end today for Mississippi State. Jess Davis leading off here in the eighth inning. Threw out the runner Lipscomb, or excuse me, Gilbert trying to score from first to end the top half of the eighth inning. And off the hands down the left field line, and that's a base hit for Jess Davis. Going to uh -oh. try to get to Shipman. Huh. Seven to four on the put out. Just hit it off the hands and into left field. Good job by the left fielder to get over there to make the play. That's Booker out of left field who makes the strong play. Davis is a race by a country mile down in second. Out number one of the eight. And here's Kellum Clark. And first pitch swinging, hits that ball well. Left field, back to the track and gone. Opposite field home run for Kellum Clark, his 14th home run of the season. And it's a 10 to five game. Well, that one cleared the entire front level of the outfield. It got all of that one going the opposite way.
Got the pitch over the plate, went the other way. How big is that now for Jess Davis, thrown out trying to stretch to a double? And now Cameron James will bat. Cameron James, two for two today. Yeah, Charlie, final broadcast today. We start the season, and it's always cold. The end when it's hot. Yeah, the weather has turned. Yeah, the weather has turned. Yeah, appreciate all the great folks that watch us good many games when they can't make it to the ballpark. And send us the text, the tweets. We feel like we're a part of all of your families. You know, it's an absolute privilege, and it's one I never take for granted. Has it been as fun of a year this year, without doubt? Everybody knows that, even the guys in the dugout. But like you said, Charlie, it's always fun for us to show up at the ballpark. There's a swing and a miss, and Cameron James strikes out for the second out. Always a lot of fun to get in the booth and come to this ballpark. And a lot of times it's packed out. We've got a great seat in this beautiful ballpark. So we appreciate all you guys playing along with us this season. Two outs, Braylon Skinner comes to the plate. Singled his last time up. There will be no tomorrow for the dogs. But there will be a next year. And you know that Mississippi State will be quickly to work. Yeah, you turn the pace to tomorrow. That's when you start thinking about the construction of the future. And how do you get to the future? Into left field, Booker ranging over. He's there to make the catch, and that will end the inning. So the Bulldogs get a run on a solo home run by Kellum Clark. It's 10 to 5 Tennessee as we move to the ninth. 10 to 5 Tennessee leading here in the top of the ninth inning. Charlie, we talked a minute ago about all the guys in the control room. There's Thomas. There's Lewis behind the plate. Sam down the first base side. Bailey. You got Cody down there, Noah, David, and then uh, William right there with a the roving camera. All the guys are giving you the great shots at the ballpark, and Dylan Bonfanti does some stuff as well during the season. And Charlie, I'll tell you what, those are the guys right there that give you the good shots throughout the entire season and make it easy for us. We've got the easy job. We just show up and we talk about a ball game, all the guys that – all right, back in the studio, and all the guys running the cameras are the ones that make it happen on the backside. Well, and game in, game out, going the extra mile to help put on a great presentation, and those guys are just outstanding. And first pitch swinging, Ortega rolls to the first baseman. Casey Hunt has checked in to pitch. Ortega rolls out, three to one on the put out. Leadoff man retired here in the ninth. You know, that's the thing, Bart, the production that Benny and all the guys put together is just, it's second to none within the league. Well, and all those guys, they come up here before the game starts. We kind of hang out together, eat the pregame meal, and it's a big family. We give each other a hard time. They give me the hardest time. Here's Christian Scott, who'll step in. So it's a big crew, and our goal every game is to bring you something that, first of all, it's about the game. It's not about us. Unlike some guys, may have some ego guys in this business, Charlie. You're looking at me with a kind of out of the corner of your mouth, out of the corner of your eye. I haven't have, met any of those. I don't have an ego. 
There's a strike call, and the count's two and two. Talking about getting back to work. And There's a strikeout. The part, you know, we talk about getting to work, kind of looking at the team, and you know, have the draft come up in June. That'll obviously impact college baseball teams across the country. How many of your signees come to college? I mean, the guys you have decide to leave early. Well, college baseball has gotten so much bigger now, and there are so many teams that want to win. But I think if you're anyone around the country and you look at this fan base, you see this ballpark, you see how many people show up here even in a losing season. And from a recruiting standpoint, a transfer portal standpoint, from a junior college standpoint, from a high school standpoint, this is a program here at Starkville that can turn it around, you think, in a hurry. Here's the 0-2. Ground ball right side out at R.J. Yeager. He'll make the throw and a 1-2-3 inning for K.C. Hunt here in the top of the ninth inning after 56 games. So Walsh comes on, 22nd appearance on the season. He's gone 31 and a third. Better than a strikeout in an inning, and he's walked just seven. And he faces Tanner Leggett. It'll be Leggett and then R.J. Yeager and Luke Hancock here in the ninth inning. They pulled the string right there. Leggett one for two today. He singled his last time up. Well, stays alive, fouls one off. Up the middle, second baseman shaded that way. Ortega makes the strong throw and the first out of the ninth. So R.J. Yeager, two hits on the day, playing his final game as a Bulldog. Homered in the first, singled in the seventh. Pretty good breeze now, picking up, blowing out to left field. transfers, whether they belong, and boy, R.J. Yeager. Had a slow start to the season and played through it. And into the year with a really good season. And here's Luke Hancock. Stayed down to his final out here in 2022. will end on an 11-game SEC losing streak if they're not able to come back. Let's go, Hemma!
Two balls and two strikes to Luke Hancock. Hard hit ball at the first baseman. Lipsius underhand toss, and that will do it. And Tennessee sweeps Mississippi State this weekend. And on the final day of the regular season, the Vols win it 10-5. Well, Bulldogs.